Good morning. All right, so a couple of nice days off at a low there. Um, starting here with the spiders and we see they're bumping their heads right up against this resistance here where these pivot highs were created not long ago. So we've closed the void. And we talked about the void concept yesterday in MT Live. Hope you enjoyed that. So now we look for the reaction here. Uh, let me just recreate a new line and move it up to the next section of pivot highs up above there. So markets made the low. Uh, you can see the gap reversal down there on the hourly chart. And now, you know, prices have moved up to the area of those highs, and we need to see the reaction. And so far, the reaction has been, uh, I guess, neutral. And we'll look at the futures. We'll get a better view of what this actually looks like here at the current trading. Uh, kind of odd. Well, spiders, so the futures will be clearer. But this... Uh, chopping around and then this gap up, I guess overnight, and now it's starting to come back in again, where it's rolling back over. Trend is still up. Our major support is down here. Let's call it 280 to 281 on the spiders. Ideally, it holds this minor support area here. So possibly 15, 20, 30 minutes of jiggling around here that going sideways would be bullish suggesting potential to move up to this next level of resistance up here and 286-ish. Yeah, where these uh, bodies are overlapping each other. That would be a relatively sizable move. But since we've got this you know, gap up yesterday, which kind of in a sense threw a wrench into things, ideally, Bars like this gap down where, um, and not a lot, where buyers step up on some pullback and then they push up rather than uh, having this gap up and then the gap fill and then the move back up again and the close strong right into the end of the day. Um, but it's right at, the, at this congestion area here. So the same area here is what this is right there. Uh, and so that it puts us with a, uh, just to move that up here. You know, that line in the sand there to, to deal with. So nice move off of the low for a couple of days. Um, maybe it's just going to rest here for a bit and get a little choppy. So we, we'll see. Q's, somewhat of a similar situation. Uh, pivots up there. Let me open that up a little bit. No need to see the pivot highs. And almost looking exactly the same as if some news came out. Um, but bottoming tails, we got reversals on the weekly charts, and we got today and tomorrow for buyers to to hang on to the gains here and and this bullish bar that's formed here on this turn. You know, looking at the cues, this angle of retracement. And that's one of the concepts that we look at is during pullbacks is the angle of retracement, meaning there are bearish angles of retracement, there are bullish angles of retracement. And this is leaning more toward the bearish side. Um, not totally since it's not vertical, but a little bit more bearish, this angle of retracement, how it's come down. So what that means is historically, it's just, it's not as if it's in a strong uptrend and you've got what you might recognize as a bull type of a flag within that uptrend, that, that would be a bullish angle of retracement versus this one a bit steeper and, and as well as the depth of the retracement. So historically what that would suggest, and ideally it'll happen where we get some chopping around here, uh, you know, into next week actually would be good to where it then begins to build up a little bit of a larger base, which we will see. And right, let's just assume that we get some chopping around here for a few days on the daily time frame. 
And that has the effect, couple of effects, meaning it, as it builds up that support, there are attempts to go lower, which we can see do buyers reemerge and push it back up again. That's a good sign. In addition, as time goes on, more bars here, it moves prices away from these areas to the left. And so, so theoretically, that allows prices to move beyond them, or we can give them less respect in a sense, meaning when you have a decline like this and the areas of resistance are directly to the left, like let's just say it happened yesterday, two days ago, that resistance to the left is going to be new, let's just say in memory, uh, more potential to react to it. And as chai prices go sideways here, theoretically also, right? This is a theoretical of how we read price action, but it does play out to be true in that buyers that bought here or here you know, on those down days that we would see as this would be building up a base, their fear grows, meaning I'm not gonna get my money back. Look at it, how the market's going down, especially if they're watching intraday where it breaks a prior day's low, uh, or maybe two, if, it, if we do a, a retest of W type of bottom, where those buyers that are holding losses up here lose their confidence that they're gonna get their money back. So basing action has an effect of removing supply, those sellers over there. In addition, those of us that want to buy long or add to longs, uh, we can also see using bar by bar analysis that buyers do step up aggressively on dips and, and we get to view that price action. And then we'll put it in the context of the weekly chart as well. Um, do we get another bottoming tail bar? Um, can you imagine even on Monday morning for whatever reason, you know, there's some tweet or some China news comes out and prices gap down on Monday morning. But, you know, by Monday afternoon or midweek, we've got another green bar here. You know, at the end of the next week, we've got a green bar next to the bottoming tail bar. So that begins to, as I said, build up a base that we can make a launching pad to move higher from. So the whole master trader approach is to use various concepts like angle of retracement, bar by bar, uh, depth of retracement, relative strength, relative weakness, market internals, and putting that all together uh, to understand what we're dealing with in the moment, as well as what the probabilities are for the future. So let's take a look at a couple other markets. The Russell, we always like to compare these markets and we know that the Russell broke down under here. So the question becomes, was this breakdown here premature? Was it uh, news related where it's just a peekaboo low uh, break under support, which then turns it out in 2020 hindsight that it would be a shakeout. So the prices retrace back up here again and again, some sideways price action for the same reasons explained, being able to build up some support down here or a base to launch prices to go higher. Uh, intraday, same story. You know, prices are up against this, this resistance here, which you can see. And so some chopping around makes a whole lot of sense. You know, doesn't mean it has to do that, right? We look at the charts and we say, this is what we have right now. What might happen? Historically, what happens? So prices came down, V bottom, off of the low there, maybe can get up to the 20 MA. There is an unfilled gap. But what's highly unlikely or historically, the pattern that results is coming down here like this and then just marching right back up into the highs here as if this didn't happen. You know, that that just typically doesn't happen. And, and it's more along the lines of kind of what this has, what this did after the post Christmas low, making the V bottom and then just marching right up and it didn't pivot, right? Didn't pivot at all, where it made a, a little pullback and move up, which would typically happen uh, after a, a drop like that, not a V bottom, 
you know, well, we, we did see some type of a little retest back there, uh, but it really wasn't much of one. Right? This one didn't retest at all. It just went sideways. So a bit unusual what, what happened there at the beginning of this year. Uh, in any event, this is a, a new point in time. Transports, right? they joined the party. This is good. They're up against their respective resistance area as well. They're stalled here, same reversal on the weekly, good sign, but violated the uptrend there. So maybe the transports can continue to bring up the rear. They've done that a lot over the last couple of years, playing catch up. Uh, but we can see everywhere prices are up against some resistance here, which could make things a little choppy or difficult here, uh, as opposed to the last couple of days. In addition, we see that bonds are up here again, uh, decently. So this little pullback is being bought aggressively. So buyers are pretty aggressive here, even with a wide range bar to the downside like this. Now, this could certainly fail. I mean, the normal pullback in a trend like this would probably be down where these overlapping opens and closes are around 152-ish, uh, but we'll see. And that would actually be beneficial if this did pull back because Buyers being aggressive after a run like this and the prior high so close, you know, that has the potential to turn into an M top and prices are right up against this resistance area. So, so far, pretty bullish still, wide range bar. Uh, that signal that is slowing my momentum was coming and we've got it. Maybe we're just getting some chopping around, but bullish trend in bonds, which leads to the whole conversation we've been having about inverted yield curves and um, and so on. And let's take a peek at the futures there. So, so you see the S&Ps beginning to stall there. So we get a cleaner look. Let's get this back here. Right. Impressive weekly reversal. And like I said, we'll see if it holds on uh, into the end of tomorrow. The, mo the momentum here is slowing. You know, it hit the resistance and came right back in again. We've got initial support right there on the ES, the 280.20 level. And then, you know, the 2800, which was targeted on the way down to buy that actually failed, right? This was what was talked about as the buy area by those that were the most bullish that failed and drove it down to that next pivot low level. Uh, should be where buyers want to step up. So with that in mind, and so we got a number, we got where others were focused. Now we look at the charts and we see that there was accumulation there on the hourly chart. Now, if it gets down there, buyers theoretically are supposed to show up again. If they don't, it opens up the door to the void because this momentum move, someone asked in um, MT Live yesterday, about big bars and what was happening in smaller time frames, And they didn't ask it exactly like that, but it was a good question as it relates to looking inside of a bar and multiple time frames. So what we see here is this big bar, that momentum move, and then the building or creating of support here to take prices higher. So this 2,800 level is pretty important to hold. Uh, so it doesn't mean there can't be little shakeouts because a lot of times the algorithms do that. They just poke down through it, take out some stops, but we would wanna see that to be a shakeout and flip things back up again. So on pullbacks, that level is pretty important to hold. So if 2820 fails, 2800 ideally holds, um, You know, give or take a bit. We don't look at like exact levels and say, oh, that's like a glass floor. Oh, it's like a little area. So if it chops around there and then maybe it could uh, do a little price action like this again, a little bottoming type of price action. And then we see how it all unfolds from there. Right. And Q's, right, same story. Um, so pretty strong, should be pretty strong support at 7160. Below that opens up the door to uh, falling off the cliff. Of course, we don't want to see that. However, right, right. This, however, is 
wouldn't that just set up the ideal scenario on the daily chart if it did fall down into the wide range bar? Meaning as it begins to fall and buyers do show up again, let's just say it's at 7044 at this area and then begins to reverse right, with strength, that would produce our W bottom on the daily chart. An historical pattern that has super high probability of moving significantly higher. And that would be okay to getting some type of secondary bar here of stabilization on the NASDAQ futures or the cues that we were looking at. And right? so we talked about the angle of retracement being somewhat bearish and a lot of times getting a second bar to move prices away from this resistance that would open up the door to a nice move. The Dow, right? same story, right? Pretty much the same story. So, you know, different levels, different reference points as you go through these markets, but we see that they're doing pretty much the same thing. It's up against resistance there. So odds are it's not gonna go much higher. Right? If it does poke through here, you know, again, odds are it's not gonna go a whole lot, but uh, we'll just see how it unfolds. We already looked at bonds, oil stabilizing here, finally getting down to that area that we were looking for it to get down to, and it didn't get down there without a little stall. And so that made things questionable. And then they went down yesterday and that took down the uh, ETFs with it. So now with oil down to this significant level here, you know, give or take where it's resting on same story. We look at equities, we look at crude oil, we could be looking at soybeans, we could be looking at a chart of rocks, doesn't matter. Wherever people wanted to buy it before, right, we looked to the left and that's where they're gonna step up and try and give it a shot to buy again. So this pattern could turn into what we refer to as a breakdown bar failure, which would be a break under these two lows and then an inside bar and then it takes it out and then we get some kind of movement to the upside. Lastly, gold backed off a lot. It's holding up here. And uh, I don't know who this fellow was that was on CNBC this morning. doesn't really matter, but he was making the case for gold making uh, new all-time highs. Maybe he's right. This is a pretty big move coming off of this low. And uh, if we go to say a monthly chart, you know, we've got this long period of consolidation here. So that putting that very strong move in, in gold in perspective, you know, strong move over the last couple of days, really not a big deal long-term. However, getting through this area, I would tend to agree that there's the potential to having a very, very sizable move in gold since the last few years, it's been doing nothing here, but it does have to clear this area um, and if it does that, this is something that we're going to want to consider as a core holding for a while. So we'll see what actually happens there. Right. With that being said, getting a little late. And let me turn it over to Dan. Sorry, Dan. All right. No worries. All good stuff. Uh, all our opens are fine. So I'm going to go right to the gappers because we only have a couple minutes left. I, uh, we're in this TLT call spread that expires tomorrow. It's gapping up a little bit here, but our short strike is over this high. Yesterday, it closed at 5 cents, which was over 75% of max gain. Um, I wasn't around, but you know that would have been a place to cover half if you wanted to, but we're fine. Everything else looks fine. Uh, lift, I see, is gapping down a little bit. Greg gave that in pins uh, yesterday, and I like them both for put spreads also for the weeklies. Let's go to gappers now. Let's see, I don't know if this is bio or what, 12 bucks. Um, you know, this one, the, the McGraw, talking about 10 baggers. You know, this monthly could be a 10 bagger, but it needs to set up. CLDR 544, that's in pain. That looks like a death trend. Uh, DHI, 
I like the breakdown failure. I like the two bar reversal on the weekly. I'm going to keep an eye on that uh, for a put spread and a directional, although it's at the top of its range. Now here's a nice sideways pattern. Look how many times this is tested. It. I sell G, it's a bio, uh, but this is actually a candidate for a put spread or a condor. You know, we rarely start with condors, but we have specific patterns, which is range bound and very clear areas of support and resistance. And then you just got to stop out of the one that doesn't work because this, you know, it's multi-month trading range. It's also a setup to go long or short on the break. Gapping up to 128 resistance, nothing to do there. That was earnings, SAIC, gapped up to 84, now coming in hard, 81. Uh, remember my two-step process on gaps, compelling gap uh, with a price void, not too big. This one's too big, but step two is I need a controlled intraday setup, and that's coming in too hard. Mick. 805, very bearish gap down. <clears throat> Kirk, uh, 305, that look, that's a death trend. Look at the, hey, we're gonna talk about trend quality next week. And there's so many to talk about. Yeah. But look at this, that, well, this was a mess, but once it cracked here, this is just steady, steady, steady dumping. That that's a that's dumpage right there. Um, Hove. Why am I looking at Hove? I got no interest on that. Yes, it must have been earnings. Uh, SFIX did gap up 31 plus, which was an excessive gap. Look here on your weekly, way 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 the heck up here. Um, so gaps too excessive for me. MDB I think was earnings. 145.50, so that's a bearish gap, 50% into the real body. Although, although this is a bullish setup in and of itself, that would have been a put spread candidate under yesterday's low, <coughs> but it's a mess now. Remember, I'm looking for tier one setups. Five, 126, it's gap into resistance. Hypothetically, if it were gapping, you know, to 130 over all these bars, then 30 minute high, it should plow through this resistance. But right now there's there's nothing. SIG, nasty downtrend, it's weak pre-market. That's actually a short watch. Um, it's in a, I'm gonna put that over here. Oh, that was shot right there. Uh, Cause this is a downtrend. Two bar reversal at the 20, bearish pre-market. I like that's the best thing I've seen so far. Uh, Tesla, yeah, I, I mentioned that to Greg pre-market. This is on my list um, for put spread. I like the uh, the reversal here. Uh, this was a nice gap and I like that pre-market a lot. That's, that's a beautiful pre-market. So McGraw, I'm assigning this to you to get us into a put spread. Let's do a put spread for tomorrow, maybe even over five minute high, provided the broader markets are holding. And, you know, I got an email from somebody on shop. We took our stop yesterday. I made it clear. I was watching it. I sent out a telegram. I sent out another telegram saying I'm taking the stop. It's bullish. Uh, and then some guy says, I didn't take my stop. What do I do? I'm like, Come on, man, it's, it's the all time highs and negated the red bar. I, I hate hearing stories like that. That's a home, that's a nasty gap. Um, NVIDIA, mm, it was, yeah, 15 minutes holding, but still it was relative weakness to the market, which um, closed at the high. Tesla sold. Oh, what do you, I don't know what you're doing. Yeah, AMD's on my list.